Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We started in the last week a new series called Proofs That Prosperity Is God's Will. And if you've missed the last five days, you can go to my YouTube channel and go to YouTube.com, type in my name as the channel is listed under my name, Cherry Campbell, C-H-E-R-R-I, spelled with an I, and then Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L, Cherry Campbell, YouTube channel. And then you will see these radio programs posted and the new series that we started, Prosperity, Proofs That Prosperity Is God's Will. And again, if you don't like the word prosperity, I've said this in the last five days, and so I hope that you've heard these things and you're not just joining us first time today. But if you are joining us for the first time, don't be afraid of the word prosperity. God uses many words in the Bible different words that relate to the same thing. And I've already established in the last five programs, what is prosperity? I gave you the definition. The verb to prosper means to do better, to advance, to increase, to break out and go over, to be at ease, to succeed in reaching. And I really like that part to break out and go over. We'll come back to that in a moment. And then the noun prosperity means abundance, wealth, peace, quietness, and tranquility. And then the adjective prosperous means consistently successful, flourishing, and thriving. And then on the opposite side of that, the word poverty means to come short to live in lack of material and financial needs, to come short, to live in lack of material and financial needs. Now, another definition that I really like is prosperity is having all that you need with excess so that you can meet the needs of others. Having all that you need with excess so that you can meet the needs of others. So you see Prosperity is relative. It is not a dollar amount. It is relative to every person based on each person's needs because prosperity is having all that you need with excess so that you can meet the needs of others. So that's where we said the definition to break out and go over. So it's over what you need. So just having what you need is not full prosperity. It's good, but it's not fullness of prosperity because fullness of prosperity is to go over, to have excess, to meet the needs of others. And I really like the verse in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And the Amplified Bible says, and charitable donation. So you abound in every good work and charitable donation. That is the true definition of prosperity. And then I also explained true biblical prosperity is seen in the Hebrew word shalom, which accurately translated means wholeness, W-H-O-L-E, wholeness in every area of life. And we have nine areas of our life, spirit and soul, which is your mind, will and emotions and your body and your finances, and your family, that's marriage, children, grandchildren, parents, siblings, then all other relationships, then the work of your hands, and then your protection from danger, and then your future. Now, these are nine areas of your life. True biblical prosperity is wholeness in every area. So if you have a financial abundance, but you do not have health, you are not truly prosperous. If you have plenty of money, but you do not have a good family relationship, if your marriage is broken, you are not truly prosperous. If you have a lot of money, but your mind is in torment, anxious and worried and depressed, you are not truly prosperous. But on the other side, if you have a happy, loving family, 
and a healthy, strong body and a happy mind, but you don't have money, then you're not prosperous. So you see, money is prosperity is not only money and material things, but it includes money and material things as one of the nine areas of your life. And if any area of your life, any of those nine that I named is not complete and whole, then you are not truly prosperous. Now in this series, we are looking at financial and material prosperity, which is the increase and fruitfulness and, and abundance in your finances and material possessions. And then we gave you proof number one, which is how many times God talks about prosperity. He talks about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, even over a thousand times throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm giving you these proofs and I gave you a list of words that the Bible uses and he uses words like this. There's the word prosper, prosperity, prosperous, abound, abundance, wealth, wealthy, rich, riches, bless, blessing, blessings, increase, increasing, fruitful, fruitfulness, bounty, bountifully, bountifulness, overflow, overflowing, enlarge and enlarged, plenty, flourish and flourishing, fatness, make fat, made fat, success, successful, thrive and thriving, waxed great, became very great. And then this is another one I saw and I looked it up and the word multiply. Multiply is in the King James Version 46 times and almost every time it is speaking of um, wealth, material things. Most of those times are referring to financial material provision not all of them but most of them then so multiply is there 46 times multiplied is there 44 times now let me read this to you i looked up in exodus chapter 1 verse 7 exodus 1 7 and the children of israel were fruitful okay there's a word and increased abundantly. Well, increase is a prosperity word. Abundantly is a prosperity word. And multiplied, there's another prosperity word. And waxed exceeding mighty. Now notice, this is the King James, uses the word mighty when it's referring to greatness, and waxed exceeding mightly, so, mighty. So it has the word fruitful, increased abundantly, and multiplied. There's four words in one verse, plus the words waxed exceeding mighty. So you see, the children of Israel were fruitful, increased abundantly, and multiplied. These are all words relating to prosperity. It's multiplication, increase, fruitfulness, abundance, Hallelujah. That was Exodus 1, 7. Then I was giving you scripture promises. And I'm going to pick up where I left off. I'm giving you more scripture promises. Now I ended in Job 22. I'm going to read that one to you again. In Job 22, 21, it says in the NIV, it says it like this. Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. If you don't like the word prosperity, get over it because it's in the Bible. Here is a scripture. You should not hate this verse because it has the word prosperity. And yet again, what I was showing you yesterday, especially in the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you will see over and over and over again. I read to you yesterday, many scriptures that show that when you walk in God's ways, keeping his commands, you will prosper and increase and multiply in and God will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, the crops of your land, your silver, your gold, your storehouses, you will get become prosperous and multiply and increase abundantly in all these areas that relate 
to financial material increase, including your silver and gold and your crops and your cattle and your sheep. Now, those were rural people. You have a different job today. If you're not a farmer, then whatever it is that you do, God can multiply it and bring increase to it. And we see that again and again, it, that prosperity is the reward for obedience to God. Or you could say walking in all God's ways, walking in his ways. And now we see in Job twenty two twenty one, submit to God. That's another way to say the same thing. Submit to God. Same thing as walk in his ways. So when you submit to God and be at peace with him in this way, prosperity will come to you. We again see that prosperity is the reward for walking in God's ways. Prosperity is the reward for submitting to God. Prosperity is the word reward for obeying God. And I've given you so many scriptures. Look it up yourself. Read the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy and read those references. Again, let me show you quickly. Leviticus 26, 3 through 10. Deuteronomy 5, 33. Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 13. Deuteronomy 7, 12 to 14. Deuteronomy 8, 6 to 18. Deuteronomy 11, 13 to 15. Deuteronomy 15, 6. Deuteronomy 16, 15. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through through 13 Deuteronomy 29 9 Deuteronomy 30 verses 9 and 10 and 16 all of those words show you that when you walk in his ways keeping his commands obeying him then you will prosper increase multiply greatly in every area of your life read it for yourself and now Job twenty two twenty one, submit to God be at peace with him that's walking in his ways submitting to God obeying walking in his ways in this way, prosperity will come to you. That's the NIV. And that shows you that prosperity is the reward for submitting to God. Prosperity is the reward for walking in his ways. Now, let me stop there a minute. And you think, well, I love God. I go to church. I walk in his ways. Well, let me remind you that his ways also include what we have learned as to be the spiritual laws of the kingdom. And we receive everything from God through the spiritual laws. And let me remind you, we have studied seven primary spiritual laws. One is love. Another is faith. Another is the creative power of your words. Another is Your spiritual authority to rule in your life over all the areas of your life. You rule over your body. You rule over your mind. You rule over your finances. Your spiritual authority to rule over every area of your life and to rule in the earth over the earth. That is the physical elements of the earth. Then there is the law of sowing and reaping and then the law of wisdom, which is being led by the Holy Spirit and then the law of obedience. Now, all of these seven primary spiritual laws are interrelated and interdependent. They all work together. So again, you can say, well, I love God. I go to church. I try to keep his commands, but I'm not prospering. Well, That is where you need to learn his ways. What are his ways? The spiritual laws that operate his system, his government, his kingdom. And that's where we studied the kingdom of God and the system of God and the spiritual laws that govern it. And we're not talking about just commandments like thou shalt not kill. We're talking about laws being like the laws of physics in the earth, where the earth operates by laws of physics, like the law of gravity and the law of electricity, that you learn those laws and you operate in them and then they benefit you. Well, God's kingdom His system, his government operates by spiritual laws and everything you receive from God will be by the spiritual laws or you won't receive. You do not receive from God by 
the laws of this world. And the kingdom of this world operates in virtually direct opposite ways from God's ways or laws. So God's kingdom operates by faith. This world operates by fear. God's kingdom operates by sowing and reaping and giving and walking in love. This world operates by taking, keeping, hoarding, being greedy, and in different ways. We've talked about this before. God's system is different. And so if you think, well, I love God, I go to church, I do my best to keep his commands, but I'm not prospering. Well, that's where you need to learn the spiritual laws of his kingdom, These, especially the seven primary spiritual laws. I know there are other laws, but I believe they are all directly linked to one of these seven primary. And that through these laws, you will receive the prosperity, the abundance, the increase, the healing and the wholeness in your body and your family, your marriage, etc. So that you will only receive from God by his spiritual laws of the kingdom. That's why you need to learn the spiritual laws of the kingdom. I do have them recorded in these radio programs. They're all available on my YouTube channel. Go to the radio broadcast category and look for the kingdom of God series. Then also I have the law of faith series posted the law of faith. You need to understand God's kind of faith and how it works. Because a lot of people are confused and they're doing what they think is faith. And they say, God, I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. Well, the problem is lack of knowledge that you don't understand his ways. And then also I have the fruit of the spirit series in which we taught about all nine fruit of the spirit, including love, which is the law of love, how love works, how love operates, how to walk in love. Then we also covered the law of the creative power of words. And we've taught on the law of spiritual authority, which is a six month series we did in great detail. And then we covered the law of sowing and reaping, which was all also many weeks and months. And then we also covered the law of wisdom series, which is how to be led by the Holy Spirit. So we taught on wisdom and how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And then we've also covered the law of obedience. So we've already done teachings on all of these spiritual laws. So study these ways. You need to understand that you will receive his increase and prosperity and multiplication and fruitfulness and abundance and enlargement by the spiritual laws. Nothing is automatic. Just because you get saved, you should have learned this by now. You are not automatically healed and prospered. No, it doesn't work that way. You're saved and now you begin learning the ways of the kingdom and the laws that govern it. And those spiritual laws are the ways you will receive the promises by spiritual laws. You will receive the promises. So Job twenty two twenty one. submit to God, be at peace with him in this way. Prosperity will come to you again. It's not automatic just because you love God. It comes by using the spiritual laws of the kingdom. Then I read to you also verse 24 in the King James Version says, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Now in Colorado, we know what dust is. You've got to dust your furniture pretty regularly because how often does dust collect continually? You can dust it and look at it 30 minutes later or less and still again see a speck of dust. Specks of dust continually lay up. Well, he says you shall lay up gold as dust. That indicates that you should be able to lay up specks of gold as often as you see the dust gather 
on your furniture. Now that's a great promise. And he says, you shall lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. So how many stones are in the brooks? There are a lot of stones in the brooks, right? Well, that's how much gold you can lay up. Now, this is regarding material gold. I mean, this is not figurative gold. It is literal gold. And then verse 25 says, Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense, and you shall have plenty of silver. Plenty of silver. So he says here, you're laying up gold and you have plenty of silver. That is not figurative. It is literal silver and gold. Glory to God. So don't be afraid by and and don't get turned off there. And I say this because there are a lot of Christians who heard they have heard negative things about the word prosperity and biblical prosperity and what they call the biblical um, teachings and doctrines of prosperity, prosperity teachings. And it's all founded in the Bible. Just read it for yourself. And there's a lot of it. And it is God's reward to you. Prosperity is God's reward to you for serving him. But you must learn the laws of the kingdom, spiritual operational laws to receive them, receive the 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 prosperity, the gold, the silver. Then look at this again. Job 36, 11, Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him. Look at this. Another if you obey, if they obey, you could say if you obey and serve him, they or you could say you will spend the rest of their days in prosperity. You will spend the rest of your days in prosperity. Notice again. Over and over and over scripture after scripture, I'm giving you, if you obey and serve him, if you submit to God, prosperity will come to you. This says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend the rest of their days in prosperity and their years in contentment. Then look at this scripture, Job 36, 16, Job 36, 16. He is wooing you from the jaws of distress to a spacious place, free from restriction, to the comfort of your table, laden with choice food. Now, notice this verse is obviously relating to prosperity. But the word prosperity is not there. Abundance is not there. Enlargement is not there. This verse uses different words. It says he is wooing you from the jaws of distress to a spacious place. There is a different way the Bible is describing prosperity. A spacious place that goes with enlargement. A spacious place, free from restriction, to the comfort of your table laden with choice food. Your table laden, your table laden, laden is a King James word. Again, or um, it is a word we don't use so often, I should say. Your table laden with choice food. So there we have another way that prosperity is described in different words. Now that word distress and in the new King James, indeed, he would have brought you out of dire distress. That word distress actually in the old King James is the word straight. And what it is in the Hebrew is it's the word mouth or opening Mouth or opening. What it relates to is narrowness and tightness and the narrow, straight place. It is actually like going through a womb. And 
the that pressure of going through the narrow um when the channel uh, that that delivers the baby it's a tight narrow opening that the baby is born through but has to go through the narrow tight straight place and then out into an open place so it's the picture like a baby being born going through the narrow channel of delivery in being born out into the broad wide open place that's the picture of this verse that you might feel tight and constrained i also think of it like think of an hourglass and the narrow straight channel between the upper globe and the lower globe and when the sand is going through the hourglass from the upper a chamber to the lower chamber, it goes through a narrow opening. And that narrow is a narrow, tight, straight place. And that's what that word means. It's the place of distress. It's like giving birth. So you will come through that tight, constrained place into a broad, wide, open place. That's the promise of this verse in Job 36, 16. If you feel tight and constrained, God wants to bring you out into a broad, wide, open place. Well, I'm out of time, so join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.